You're pretty okay. good. Good evening and welcome once again to the Marty Heiser Show. We have got an incredible show. I'm calling this show the Full Contact Show. The first half hour is going to be full contact professional minor league hockey with our beloved Danbury Whalers. Yes, you may have already heard, the Danbury Whalers are in the championship series for the Federal Hockey League. This could be the first time that Danbury Whalers bring home a championship to Danbury, Connecticut. It's really incredible. If you've ever been down to one of these games, the place is packed. The Danbury Arena is rocking. These guys, some of whom you've met on this show already, are doing an incredible job. And I'm telling you, it's going to be great. The Danbury Whalers are playing the New Jersey Outlaws. It's going to be a best of seven series. The first two games are this weekend, Friday, Saturday, over in New Jersey. Next week, February 30th and February 31st, hopefully they'll have it wrapped up right here at the Danbury Ice Arena. And joining me right now is Phil Esposito, the coach of the Danbury Whalers, as well as Marco who's also your communication director. Mar but Marco's infamous. Infamous, Marco. <laughs> if you go on their website, you can see. Uh, we have a, a couple guys, Devin Guy and Carlo Ricci, who, as we speak, are screaming towards the studio. But I understand that they were working on some of their backhands and backwards crossovers, fine-tuning it for the championship. Yes, series. we just got off the ice when we were having some practice, and we just ran over here uh, to, to do, the, once again, the second week in a row of the Marty Heiser Show. This so, is how hot we are right now. I think it's more the <laughs> Phil Esposito Show. <laughs> Really. You guys keep winning. There's an appetite for this. And by the way, we'll put the number up on the on the screen too. It's uh, 438 2003. If you have a question for the coach, go ahead and call in. We'll put you live on the air. This is just, you know, uh, this is live television, so go ahead and call in. But, coach, what are your thoughts? You're playing for a championship. I don't care if you're playing uh, Mites, Pee Wee, Squirt, High School college, semi-pro, when you're skating for a championship, it's a big deal. How did you get here? Well, uh, I think it's just got a, lo a lot to do with, uh, it's got a lot to do with hard work. Um, you know, we, we, we started out back in, in August, and uh, we, we've been working, working all, all summer long to build a team. Um, we, we, we've con concentrated on building a, an offensive powerhouse team. Um, I think we've accomplished that, and we're starting. To, you know, we're starting to come together right at the right time, coming into the finals. I mean, my goal all year was to. You know, I told you this at the beginning of the year. My goal is to win a championship in Danbury, bring a championship to Danbury, because Danbury's never had one in the seven plus years that they've had. Um, you know, professional minor league hockey. Um, you know, and it would just it, it, the fans are, are ready for it. The fans have, have been begging for it, and it's and now we're here. So we got one more hill to climb here, and, and it's going to be a tough one. But you know, I, I think we're prepared for it. I'll tell you, I mean, putting together this team, and I've, I've had a chance to watch a lot of these games, you know, and you really watch through the course of the year, the, the roster, there's people coming in, people coming out, but it seems like it's building towards a crescendo. Right now, I don't see any weak links. I mean, previously, you know, during this year, there's a couple guys. That orthodontist backup goalie comes to mind. Uh, there's a, a couple guys. Actually, Marco suited up once, too, which that's the ultimate weak link. But uh, we were I just... We were desperate that Well, week. you know, you got to do what you got to do. Oh, but boy. I'm sensing that right now, there just don't seem to be any any weak links, and, you're, and you really got a team playing well together I don't see a, 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 a weak line in that on that team no we really don't I mean we have we probably have close to, to uh, nine nine of the top forwards in the league right now um, our defense has been good and, and we, we're shoring that up a little bit as we speak actually I have a defenseman coming down from Trenton in the East Coast Hockey League he'll be here tomorrow for the finals and he's gonna skate and he's gonna play yeah wow so um, what's the know, guy's name the kid is uh, name is Gentry Zollers um, he's been up in Trenton probably for the past two months. Uh -huh. uh, real good stay-at-home defenseman, solid defenseman. is going to help us huge in the finals. Wow. Um, he got sent down from Trenton yesterday, so he's going to be in the lineup on Friday night, or uh, Saturday night, correction, down in Jersey mm -hmm. uh, when we play game one. So that's going to be another tremendous help. But like I said, my nine forwards that I have right now, they're probably nine of the best in the league, and they're firing on all cylinders right now. The guys have been together now for the past, you know, because we had that situation where we had, um, you know, we had players coming, coming in, coming out. We had guys hurt. We had guys getting called up. 
up. We had guys that were sick. We went on the road trip for, you know, a, a road trip through Danville, Illinois, and, and a couple of road games where we played seven or eight games with 11 guys. Um, but I got everybody back now. Everybody who's up is back. All the guys that played in the East Coast League for the past, you know, couple of months are all back now, and they've been playing together for the past couple of weeks, and now they're all starting to gel together right at the right time. Suspensions have been served. Suspensions are all done, <laughs> so served, and, and, you know, it's amazing because we went through two series now, and I think we had something like three penalties in the last two series. Yeah, you know, I know. So. I mean, you know, I, I don't mean to, like, uh, cut attendance or anything like that at the Danbury Arena, but if you're used to going out to the Danbury Arena and seeing, uh, Dave, you had mentioned at the Rangers game, the Rangers were playing the New Jersey Devils, and within, like, the first five minutes of the two game, seconds. two seconds of the game, they were already fighting. And frankly, you've seen a little bit of that down at the Danbury Arena, but of late... It's just been good, clean hockey, and it seems like the f the Fista Cups have gone by the wayside. Yeah, I um, you know, I I particularly I I had one of those situations in Danbury where we had a a five-on-five five fight right at the beginning of the game against Cape Cod, and it turned into a disaster. Um, you know, everybody got suspended. I, yeah. I suspended. I had goalie suspended. I had Corey Fulton suspended for ten games. I got suspended for five games. Um, you know, it was just kind of a disaster situation. But, you know, the Rangers had the same thing, and, and obviously the, the National Hockey League looks at it in a different way than, than the Federal Hockey League <laughs> does. Um, you know, I, I personally would like them to adopt those rules so we, we don't have those all those suspensions. But, you know, we're, 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 we're done with that now. I mean, like, now we're here to play hockey. I got, like I said, I got, I got nine or ten of the best forwards in the league playing right now, and, and we're firing on all cylinders. So. Speaking of some of the best forwards in the league, we are just joined as the technicians are moving. We hope the mic checks are working. But we are joined by a fan favorite. I'm telling you, when I'm up in the stands, I see a lot of guy jerseys. And that's Devin Guy joining us uh, fresh off the ice. And Carlo Ricci, he's bilingual. He's French. Yeah. He's like, you know, Dennis women, Savard. Women love him. Well, I think women <laughs> kind of go for both these guys, I would have I to say, so. as a general rule. Uh, but, Devin, you're on the verge of a championship series here, best of seven. Yeah. Um, what do you think? How would you get here, and how are you going to be preparing for this uh, series coming up? Um, well, kind of preparing for it. You know, we're doing uh, the same thing we've been doing all year, just except a little bit more mental focus, I think. You know, we're trying to base all our success off hard work that we do and things and uh, practice throughout the week, and we're sticking to the game plan that we've had since game one opening night and uh, it seems to be working for us and like coach was saying we got a lot of the guys back that helped us out a lot and they've been called up to the East Coast League for a while and now that we got them back you know um, I think even our team's confidence is um, shooting skyward and we feel like we deserve to win this and that we're going to. Now coach as you're behind the bench you know hockey's a little bit different than like football or baseball. Baseball you just put your team out there and you hope for the best and you go have a cigarette. When you're coaching a hockey game it's almost like a symphony. You're, you know, you got to have the right guy to go out. When do you put a guy out like Devin Guy, and when do you put a guy out like uh, Rich Seifert, who just kind of weasels around the nets and scores a lot of goals? Devin Guy is just going to go right through a brick wall and do whatever it takes. How do you play these guys? Well, it's just I, I, I kind of like read the game. You know, I, I've been involved in this game since I was five years old, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I am 41. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I've been involved in this game for like 30, you know, 30 some odd plus years, and and you know, after a while, you just start to get a feel of how the game is going and what you need at a certain time. And then every now and then during a game, you get the feeling of one line that's really going. Like up in up in Cape Cod, I mean, up in uh, Thousand Islands this past weekend, you know, I, we had two or three lines that were just they were just on fire. Like Nick Deshane, Chris Seifert, and uh, Alex Scoople. Every time I put them on the ice, they were all in there in the in the offensive zone the whole time, controlling the puck, just controlling the puck. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And then it just sort of got contagious, and then it, it, it transferred over to the Sean O'Malley, the Matt Moffat line, and then it transferred over to the Andrew Willock and, and Kelly Miller line. And then you know I throw De you know Devin in there. Devin has a role, and Devin knows what his job is. Is. And Devin's job is to go out there and play tough and, and be that secondary scoring for us. You know, he goes out there like up against Brooklyn. He had a big goal up against Brooklyn one night, you know. Mm -hmm. He didn't play very much, but he got out there and, and before you know it, he was he was on the ice. So he's like a spark plug for the team, and that's something huge that we need in the playoffs. By the way, if you want to call in and you have a question for either the players, the communication director, Marco, by the way, he has a girlfriend, so don't even try. <laughs> or Phil Esposito, please don't hesitate to call. Caller, you have a question for uh, the team here. Yes, I do. Um, quick question. Look, this is a really exciting time in Danbury, and people who are long-time residents of Danbury know that Danbury is a big-time hockey city. Love our hockey team. And it's really exciting to see that, that you know we're, we're going for a championship here. So my question to the 
coach and to the players. You know, fans are really excited about what's going on here. Um, it's a lot of talk about the championship. What's been the feedback you've received from residents in regards to what you guys have accomplished this year and an opportunity to go for this championship? Excellent question. Thanks for calling. What about that? Uh, let me let me ask Carlo. Carlo Carlo Ricci, originally from where again? Montreal. Montreal. Montreal so uh, French Canadian. Oh, yeah. What has your What has your reaction been when you meet some of the fans after the games? I know you sign uh, things or you're out and about at uh, well blue chips. Oh, we put them out of business. Uh, <laughs> what's the other one? Uh, Molly Darcy or whatever. What's the reaction? I mean, they're just. <laughs> it's my first year playing professionally and. and Fans are really passionate here, and uh, I mean, they just love the Danbury Whalers, and I mean, we love the support, and I mean, they're just crazy, and I can't imagine how the building's going to be in the first game at home, game three in the finals. Yeah, I mean, and that's going to be a week from tomorrow, yeah. definitely, a week from tomorrow at the Danbury Ice Arena. Now, in your hockey career, have you played for a championship before? Is this the first time? Uh, it's uh, the first time. Yeah. It is, yeah, and it's, it's very exciting, and... Uh, I mean, it's, it's a little overwhelming to be a part of it, but I'm learning so much and I'm growing as a person, as a player, being around uh, all these older guys. Excellent. Uh, Devin, what about you? Have you played for a championship? Um, uh, I, have, I haven't uh, been blessed enough to play for a championship in my pro career. Um, you know, juniors and then uh, some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, uh, I've played uh, as a player with Coach Esposito before, my first year pro, and, um, you know, this is going to be my first opportunity to get a, a championship as a pro, and I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to play in our building. I love playing in our building, and, um, you know, hopefully I want to bring this home just as much as the people out there that show us support do. Well, what about what the caller uh, uh, asked? What is your reaction from people? Are, are you recognized walking down the street, or is it just yeah, in the arena? Or what, what's what's your sense of well, you know, how the um, town has embraced you? It's actually for uh, some guys, you know, on our team, like Carlo, uh, he said he's a first-year pro, and some guys it's a little overwhelming. I was here last year, and um, uh, basically I was going to retire from the professional hockey game to pursue some other stuff that I have going on in my life, but, you know, the city of Danbury, they embrace us so well, they treat us so well that uh, I decided to come back, and um, my goal was to win a championship if I was going to come back and play another uh, professional season, and here we are, and um, if it wasn't for our fans out there, I wouldn't be here. I'm telling you, I mean, compared to like, you know, you talked about this uh, Thousand Islands arena as being a bit of a barn, um, you know, it seems like when you go into some of these other arenas, by comparison, you can see what the Danbury fans bring to the game. Well, I mean, I, I get into that question that, that the, the caller had there. I mean, I, I got one thing to say. I mean, you, you see, we, we played in Thousand Islands on, on last, whatever, last weekend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we had like 250 fans all the way up there, six hours away. I mean, it's 250 just, fans from Danbury. Did they, you put them on the bus no, in the, they, in the they luggage drove, compartment? They or? drove up there, they invaded hotels, they did everything. I mean, they were just there. I mean, it was crazy because we had more fans there than they did. Wow. And it was just, I mean, that's just the, right there, that just explains it. They're just, they're all about. Uh, being behind this team, they're all about being, you know, um, just confident about what the guys do here, and they're all about being supportive. and And this is why we feel an obligation to bring them a championship back to Danbury because they're so crazed about this team and stuff. I mean, it's just nuts. I mean, yeah. like you said about walking down the street and things. Now, I mean, I think it's starting to build. It's starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger now. I mean, I've been here. This is my second year. Last year, I was an assistant coach. Obviously, I played here a year, couple of years before that and stuff. So I had a little bit more. But like guys like Dev and stuff who have been here, who are big parts of the team and, and, and big big names in the building and stuff, it just starts to build and it's just going to keep getting better and better. And like I said, we have the the best fans in the league. And, and to give them another credit, I'll put it to you this way: when we were shaking hands against the Thousand Islands team after the last series. By the way, a nice touch, I might add, because yeah. it looked like people were mulling around and weren't quite lined up. But I think you got all the ducks yeah, in a row. But when we shook hands with the Thousand Islands team, I mean, there was Thousand Islands players that told me in the line. He said, "Listen." It is so tough to play in your building. It's not even funny. He said, "We don't. I mean, half the time we don't even want to come and play there." And I think that's one of the reasons why originally the uh, the FHL finals were supposed to be a best of seven series, and they, we were supposed to play Tuesday and Wednesday night here in Danbury. 
and our ownership because this is a, a single a hockey league you know obviously we have to worry about the financial end of it also besides mm -hmm. the hockey end of it so the league and, and all the teams kind of got together and said you know having a, a game one and game two in danbury on a tuesday and wednesday night is not going to be beneficial financially for us mm -hmm. but i think the new jersey team was pushing for it because on a tuesday night in danbury there have probably been like you know eight nine hundred thousand people there but on a friday night like next friday night game three there's going to be three thousand people there easy which makes it so much tougher to play in this building yeah yeah. By the way, this is going out live right now, so if you have questions for the coach or for any of the players, or for Marco, the communication director, please call in, 438-2003. The, the home game, well, you have two games. You have one Friday night and Saturday night in New Jersey. Well, Friday is a definite, game three. Okay. Saturday. No, no, I'm talking about... Tomorrow. No, I'm saying, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is our Saturday is our first game. Oh, down, Saturday. Okay. Saturday is our first game down in Jersey. Okay. And then game two is down in Jersey on Sunday. Okay. And then the following Friday, March 30th, is game three, and that's the only definite game. Game four on 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 Saturday is in Danbury is a is an if necessary game. I mean, there's a possibility somebody could win this in three games and it'd be over on Friday. Okay. So uh, Saturday is an if necessary game uh, at home in Danbury, and then if we go five games, it goes back to Jersey on Sunday, the following week, April 1st. Okay, so but for sure, a week from tomorrow, March 30th, at the Danbury Arena, puck drops at 7.30. 7.30, the place will be packed. Get your tickets early because there's, there's some tickets left now, but I imagine by next Friday there's not going to be any left. Yeah, it's going to be pretty incredible. Marco, what's your uh, what, what role do you play in all this? Uh, obviously, yeah, by the way, here we have uh, we have water for you guys if you want some. What, Are you uh, sure it's water? I'm sure. <laughs> nothing else uh, going on in there. But what's um, uh, what's your role in all this? And what, how have you seen this team come together? I know you deal a little bit with the uh, with the league. I know you do some of the play by play. You've seen some of the behind the scenes stuff, and you're rather a hockey savant. So uh, what do you see with the Federal Hockey League? Do you think it's going to you know, grow and thrive? And uh, what's going on at that level? Well, I am aware, even though I'm not from the area, I am aware that there have been leagues previously that have not succeeded in the way that have involved the ice arena, mm -hmm. the NEHL and the EPHL, both of which I believe you've been involved with, Phil. I'm not sure if that that's part of the reason they failed, but no, I've, I've been around the league now. Periodically, owners year. get indicted and they have to spend some time, you know, away, but. Well, you know, so far. Stuff like that. It happens. Yeah. Periodically. <laughs> a series of misunderstandings, small, really. Small stuff. Yeah, Period small yeah. stuff. Yeah. Periodically, every now and then, radio guys and TV guys go missing, too. <laughs> that's, that's true, too. That's true, too. But okay. no, this, no, this league is definitely has a stronger background as previous ones. In terms of what I've seen, I've really seen this team develop. The guys have their focus. There, there's a lot of guys who have done this before. N Nick DeShane has won titles in three different countries, including the Kelly Cup in 2005. Okay. Kelly Miller's mm -hmm. won, a, won a championship in juniors. There are guys who have played in the AHL, like, like James Sanford. Right. There are guys who have been around this, like, like Chris Seifert, who played, played with Phil in the New England Stars. Yeah. You know, for, for some of these guys, this isn't their first rodeo. For some young guys who are, who are developing, like James Kirkwood uh -huh. and Nick Temple and second-year guys like, like Sean O'Malley and Matt Carancy, you know, this is, this is, this is their, their maiden voyage to a finals. And I've really seen the team develop a respect for what they're doing uh -huh. and a respect for not just the fans but the game of hockey. They're, they're playing it the correct way. What, what's your sense uh, with some of these grizzled veterans, uh, DeShane, Kelly Miller, some of these guys you're talking about, maybe I'll ask the coach. What is their approach? What do they say to the team? What's the mood of the locker room? Is it like, listen guys, don't get too high, don't get too low, just do your job and come out and play? Or is there, you know, do you really need to get hyped up and if you don't, you're going to the, miss the boat? Well, I, I, I think the, the biggest thing is, is uh, with those guys is, is they just they, they, they instill the, the attitude in the locker room that we need to play consistently. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a consistent effort every single night and it has to be 60 minutes. And this past game that we just played in Thousand Islands um, the past week where we won the series there was one of those nights where everything just kind of came together at one time. The last game, the, the, the closeout game. Yeah, okay. Everything came together. We had everybody going in the right direction. We played 60 minutes. We played mistake-free hockey. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously the score showed what happened. When we what were, was the final we, score? We won the game seven to one. Wow, okay. And, um, you know, and that's the second place team in the league. I mean, they were the team that was fighting for Jersey for the first place all year long. Yeah. And, and <coughs> you know, granted we were in third place right behind them and we had a lot of issues with call-ups and stuff like that all year long, but now we have our team together and we have our guys. If if I had had this team all year long, I mean, I'd like to see what what we what we would what, what, what we would have done during the regular season. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's just one of those situations where the you know everything is coming together right now at the same time. 
everybody's going in the right direction. We got the veteran leadership. We got the veteran uh, uh, playing like a veteran goaltender in Peter Vetri, and he's mm -hmm. playing unbelievable right now. Um, you know, and, he, and everything is just, like I said, culminating, and it's all coming together at the right time. Okay, now, the uh, team you're playing for the championship is a team called the New Jersey Outlaws. The head coach of the New Jersey <laughs> Outlaws is a guy named Chris Ferrillo. Now, what's the story? Because you were an assistant underneath Chris Ferrillo. Uh, has he ever played any very competitive hockey? Did he know what he was talking about? Or is this a case where uh, the uh, <laughs> mentor is now going to overtake, oh uh, or the mentee is going to overtake the mentor? What's going on there? It seems to be a little bit of bad blood. Well, first of all, I wouldn't say mentee in, in any aspect <laughs> of anything with that. But anyway. So he didn't really teach you how to coach or anything like that? You were just, he well, go ahead. You tell Some the of the things he taught me are some things you don't want to teach your children. I'll put it that way. But um, it's it's one of those things where you know I played professional hockey for a long time. Right. Chris never played hockey at all. Like he never played. I don't. I think he played a little bit in junior and high school or something, but never played. And he just kind of got into the junior circuit and started coaching, and then kind of found his way into here somehow. Okay. And me and him kind of, and some of the players like Devin will be able to tell you maybe a little bit better than me. But last year things just kind of didn't mesh between me and him. I mean, I agreed to help out last year because our owners Herman Allen I had known before, yeah. and they they asked me to come and help out, and and I did, and and I was I own my own business, so I was kind of like on and off last year, and then around Christmas time kind of all. All hell broke loose at Christmas with the players and the coach and things and Alan and Herm kind of asked me to come and kind of join in a little bit and, and do a little bit more and I kind of that's when I kind of became a full-time assistant. Have you ever actually come to bro come to blows with Chris Ferrillo? Has it ever gotten physical? No it hasn't really gotten physical I mean it's gotten mouthy and wordy but it's never gotten physical I mean personally I don't think Chris would want to do that with me but we'll, we'll <laughs> You know, that's because we'll there was one. There was day. one game. I'm trying to think. I have a vivid memory of it, but it was a game where he, I guess he was coaching New Jersey and you were coaching Danbury. But there was an altercation on the ice, and it was one of these things where you know the goalies got into it, the the the, the equipment managers got into it, and then you got into it with the other coach. But it never really did come to blows. No, I I, I, I got to try and control myself because I keep getting suspended so many times. So I got I can't afford to not be on the bench. So yeah, I mean when you look at the New Orleans Saints and what they did there, you get you never have a bounty out for any player. Oh, we've never. I, I, of course I not. Like that. I just no. Said that I didn't know that a coach could get suspended for a whole year by the league from that, so I better be careful this week. They're not messing around. Yeah, yeah, you got you to gotta <laughs> be careful. Uh, Devin, what about you? I mean, you say this is the first championship <laughs> series that you're gearing up for. How are you approaching this? I mean, is this something that you're trying to get overly hyped or just follow the same routine and just be ready to play? Um, I'm, I'm a real laid back kind of character. Oh yeah, um, right. You know, there's Anyone who's seen number 10 play hockey, I don't think laid back would sure. come to mind. Sure. But okay, go ahead. Off the well, ice. You know, yeah, off the on. ice and uh, especially like during practice and stuff, some of the guys, you know, with, especially with the younger guys, they get a little bit, You, I feel like you can get too focused at times and get too caught up in everything that's going on and you know, I try to keep the mood light and you know, go out there and mess around and uh, I know my boundaries with uh, Coach here and you know, like I said, I played with him before he was my coach so you know, I have like that little little bit of leeway that I can do some other stuff. So I try to keep the mood light for the boys, keep uh -huh. the smiles going while we're on the ice. And um, but you know I'm focused. I'm I feel like I'm prepared physically. You know a lot of the guys. You know we we dedicate you know six months of our lives to this. And um, uh, you know we we might as well make the best of it. Comes down to putting three victories together. Three victories. Uh, Carlo, what about you? Just out of curiosity, what do you what do you do the rest of the season when you're not playing hockey? Uh, yeah. What do you do? I don't. Well, I mean, since it's my uh, first year pro, I mean, obviously we all want to play at a higher level. Yeah. So uh, this summer I'll work extra hard in the gym and uh, you know find a little job on the side and and you know just uh, just work hard and you know hopefully. Uh, could uh, have a bigger role next year. It does seem, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, watching this team over the course of the last few months, there seems to be like a Rolodex and a lot of turnover, a lot of teams looking for players, guys, you know, getting cut all over. Uh, your goalie alone has played in uh, England and Belgium and Sanford, uh, the defenseman, has played all over too. You yeah, know? They, a lot of those guys have been in, in very, very many different places over their careers, different mm -hmm. places. I mean, you know, James Sanford and, and Nick Deshane played at a really high level. I mean, they played in the American Hockey League. So, yeah. you know, they, 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 they spent a lot of time in, in those those higher leagues and stuff. And now 
they're, you know, they just love the game so much that they just want to be able to play. And then this is a perfect opportunity for them to kind of do it. And Nick Shane is kind of getting into the coaching end of it a little bit too. Is he? So when he, yeah, he's my player assistant coach now. So okay. when he gets out of, you know, out of the playing end of it, he's going to try and get into the coaching. And this is a good way for him to start to do it. But you know, some of the guys like we have here, like Devin. You know, Devin was a guy last year, you know, who played pro a couple of years, and now this is his second year in Danbury, and he's become an integral part of the team. And then you see Carlo, you now this is his first year pro. And although Carlo doesn't see a lot of ice time and he's not really playing a lot during the playoffs, I mean, Carlo's going to be a guy that's going to be, you know, next year we're going to be talking about, you know, when we're coming down the stretch in the playoffs next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, Carlo's one of those guys where he's, you know, he's one of the better players out there, but he's real young. He needs to get a little bit more experience. And like I said, during the playoffs next year, he'll be one of the guys that we're relying on to get the job done. And, and hockey is kind of weird com compared to other sports like baseball and football and some of those other things mm -hmm. because, you know, baseball and football, you get rookies that all of a sudden they get hyped up, hyped up, and they jump and they throw them right in the game. Yeah. Hockey is kind of one of those those things where a lot of guys don't really get thrown right in at the Wolves right away as yeah. a rookie. I mean, you got to spend some time different places and get some games under your belt. And Wayne get, Gretzky started in Indianapolis, yeah, as I recall. Yeah, and you got to get some games under your belt and you got to get some pro experience before you can actually play this game at this high level. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um, in the, in in the closing minutes here, I just want to uh, get your feed. We only have a couple minutes left. Um, what is your game plan against uh, the New Jersey Outlaws? What, what do you want to do? Do you want to dump and chase? Do you want to get on the scoreboard? Do you want to get a, a you know let your goaltending uh, carry it through? Do you want to pile on the goals? What's your plan? My plan is to just keep doing the same thing that we've been doing, getting through the through the playoffs here. I mean, we play a pretty pretty aggressive forecheck system, uh, you know, like a one two two system where we mm -hmm. go in and forecheck when we got the opportunity. When we don't, we play a one one three system where we just kind of lay you know lay back and we force them to one side and we to get them to turn the puck over on our, in our neutral zone. Mm -hmm. And and that's a system that's been working for us, and it's it's a system we're going to go with. Is that with. the neutral zone trap? It's sort of a, a variation of it. Don't you need Russian players for that, no, really? No, you, don't have, <laughs> no, you just need to get all the players on board, and when you have it on board, it works really well. It's been working for us. It worked for us against Brooklyn. It worked for us against Thousand Islands, and it's going to work It's worked for us against Jersey during the regular season. So, I mean, we're going to do that, and we're obviously we're going to jump on our chances to get offensive, you know, offensive chances to score goals, and we have the firepower to do it. And, uh, you know, everybody bought into the system and everybody's going in the same direction. I don't have any guys that doing stuff that, that, that isn't something that, that we, we portrayed and, and we set out there to do. Well, you're in the championship series, so the system must be working pretty good. Tomorrow night, if you're watching this live, uh, tomorrow night all the players are going to be at Molly Darcy's on Mill Plain Road if you want to come out and uh, support the team, come out for that. And then the first home game is going to be a week from tomorrow, March 30th, at uh, the Danbury Ice Arena. Okay, this is the lightning round. Uh, uh, Carlo, give us two seconds on what they can expect in this playoff. Quick. Uh... Quick plays and a lot of hitting. Devin, what can they expect from you? Uh, aggression and a lot of uh, action. Marco? Loud screaming. Coach, the last one. One word, a championship. A championship. That's two words, I guess. It's good, though. <laughs> our championship. So come out and support the Danbury Whalers as a community aspect. This isn't commercial. We're just talking about a community aspect. Thanks a lot. Thanks for what you're doing. Good luck. And in a couple weeks, we'd like to have you back. What do you get? A cup? A cone? What, something a like that? Big cup. We're All right. Let's see. If you, if you bring it, we're mm -hmm. going to bring it right here on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Mike. All right. Good luck, guys.